right. Let's just piss them off even more. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. This is part three of our discussion, our probably never ending. This is going to be the never ending story on mm -hmm. organic portals because this topic is so freaking fascinating. Of course, I'm joined here with my soul sisters, Nicole, Angie, and Kathy. You guys all know Nicole and Angie from their own platforms, which those links will be in the description box below. Kathy is in our Signal group. She's also been on my show before for the Shadow Work Roundtable for the first round uh, Shadow Work we did. And um, she had left me an incredible message after our part one we did and so i asked her to come on this because kathy is quite a wordsmith she's really oh. good with words so but before we get into it there's a couple of announcements um for nicole and myself if you guys are interested in doing the asia um, which has been life-changing for both nicole and me the phone number that's in my description box, that's also in nicole's description box it's the same phone number you're either entering bryce info or nicole info Jay really wants you guys to contact him before you make a purchase because he can help you get it at wholesale, at wholesale prices and he can also help you figure out what's going to work better for you. Um, the website is, it's a, it's a new company and so the website is not as user friendly as it could be. Hopefully that will change in the past. And so it's super, super, super important that whether on Nicole's channel or my channel, please text Jay. Just text him, Nicole info or Bryce info. I think I've got the phone number memorized now at 1-321-216-8047. Um, again, that will be down in the description box. And Jay will get back to you and will help you figure out the most economical way to get this product. Because we don't want you spending more money than you have to spend. We He can get, get it to you at wholesale prices. So please, please make sure you do that. The second thing I want to mention before we get into this episode with um, organic portals is the idea of a distressed soul. As Mr. Fox said at part two on our part two episode, which I will place down in the description box below if you missed it, um, distressed souls. So, so sold people, S-O-U-L-E-D, sold people who are in distress will behave like organic portals. So that is why it's important not to judge too harshly. I know a lot of people wrote in the comment section they were concerned like their children were organic. Or, first of all, if, if your child is under the age of 20, they're just assholes. Like, I'm sorry. Like, they're, that does not mean that they're... Teenagers are just assholes. Sold or not sold. They're just... We were probably assholes when we were teenagers, right? Like, so, so I wouldn't judge it too harshly. But even if it is a, a, a distressed soul, sold person who's behaving like an organic port portal you still can't help them mm -hmm. they have to you can be a support system for them but if it's abusive to you if it's draining of your energy you still have to put a boundary up so so don't freak out too hard if you think one of your family members is first of all we can get deeper into this in the conversation if you again go back and reread the cassiopeian board listen to what mr fox had to say he's going to be coming back on again to go even deeper into this most of the time Sold people run in families and organic portals run in families. We can get into that too because as you guys remember, organic portals, the more you raise in consciousness, the more they do try to come in to derail. So you could marry an organic portal on rare occasion and have children with them, but that does not mean your children are organic portals, right? They could be sold just like you. So so just don't, um, don't freak out too much. Uh, the Cassiopeians say we really don't have any right to be labeling someone as an organic portal or not. The only reason why we're talking about this is because knowledge is power and knowledge protects. So the fact that you know this exists will help you be able to put boundaries up to protect yourself and to protect your energy. So with that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and hand over to start with the, the the microphone over to Kathy because Kathy, your message that you left me was literally the whole point of us doing this episode. So let's start with that and let's let a Kathy. How did this affect you? Okay. What um, great question. So thank you for putting it out there. I think for me personally, what happened was over the over this like 20 25 years of being on my own journey 
And, um, you know, the feeling of you hear a piece here, you hear a piece there, you hear a word here. And then all of a sudden there's like this culmination of those things coming together. And all of a sudden you have a picture or an image. It, it's like the light bulb moment of sitting up straight and, and you're on high alert. And that was sort of what it was for me. It was like a shit. Like I, I'm hearing these pieces and all of a sudden, for whatever reason, I was ready to hear it in that moment where it, it painted a picture for me that deeply resonated. Um, I had chills all over me as I was listening to the podcast. I was actually quite surprised. I wasn't prepared for that kind of reaction to organic portals because when I heard the word organic portals, I was leaning towards a positive indication. I was like, Oh, what are we talking about trees? Like what are you know? <laughs> um, so it really, the content took me a little by surprise. I've heard the term um, backdrop people. And when Nicole was talking about the NPCs, it was like, oh, damn, that makes so much sense. But I wouldn't have attached the word organic portal to that. Let's so. pause on that because I've gotten that question a lot. Like, why are they called organic portals? And this is my perception of why they're called that by the Cassiopeians. It's the Cassiopeians that call them that. And you guys can give your interpretation as well. For me, it's they're organic portals because they we're all of us are port. We're all portals, but they're organically portals because they don't. So for someone like one of us or for most of the people watching if a fourth density negative being were to come in and try to manipulate and to control us we would emotionally feel that friction so there would be resistance and nicole and i were talking about this before you guys hopped on like when we were filming before we started filming so if you, an organic's job when they are used by a fourth density negative being to come into it's to derail you and so they can be used because they don't have an emotional um, an emotional hierarchy to be able to say, oh, my God, my actions are hurting somebody else. Right. So the fourth density negative entities can organically use them with no problems. Mm -hmm. Where if they tried to use one of us, there would be lots of problems, lots of issues. So that's why I believe they're called organic portals. I don't know if you guys have anything to add to that. No, I agree. I, agree. I mean, that, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> what was happening for me, once I understood what exactly you were talking about, I just, I, I literally paused the video 30 times. Like, I just kept pausing and these encounters were coming straight to the forefront uh, of my mind. And I... I have worked in my adult career with families, specifically young children for 25 years. I mean, it's just been the line of work that I do. So I've encountered a lot of humans in different sectors and in, in different settings. And um, by the end of the video, um, in my pelvis region, I felt this movement, just like I could see the bowl of my pelvis um, for whatever reason, and literally um, guilt and shame, representations of guilt and shame were leaving my body. Like they literally had their little bags <laughs> and they were saying, well, the gig is up. We're with, <laughs> she's on to us. Like it's not going to work anymore. And in that particular video, Nicole had mentioned like the matrix trap of guilt and shame. And mm -hmm. I just realized even over the course of all the healing work I've done over 20, 25 years, every, every modality I've been through, every every piece I've received um, through healers, there was that little lingering guilt of holding on to the responsibility of healing someone else. Like holding on to that guilt and shame of why couldn't I reach the heart of that person? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, it, totally. And it, and it just vanished. It just shit. I'm a crier. You should know that. I've got <laughs> pride, just, girl. Listen, I'm, I've, I've cried I, enough I, on this on camera. You're free to cry. It's cool. It's cool. So I, I am. I'm a double cancer with a with an Aquarius moon. So like feelings are just my thing. Um, <laughs> but it was so freeing to be like, 
I can release myself. I yes. can allow myself to feel the relief that all the work that there is for me to do is mine yes. to honor my path and my work and to go within and do my inner healing. It was just such a, it was such a nail in the coffin of the guilt and shame that was lingering within me, if that makes sense. And that yeah. the only way that I can truly be a helper is by helping myself, is by healing myself and permission to pour the work in where the work is going to be received mm -hmm. and not banging my little like healer head against the wall, trying to help and save people that do not have the capacity I mean, when I thought about this group of beings before, it was like, oh, they don't have the capacity right now. But if I just keep, <laughs> if I just keep pouring in, eventually they'll be at a point of capacity. But what a freedom to go, nope. Like, this is just a solid no. I, they don't have the capacity now and they're not going to have it tomorrow. I can release them to their own archetype, release them to their own path and just stay in my lane yeah and there was just immense freedom in that if that makes sense yeah and that's absolutely. why we i think that's the biggest thing we wanted to because we keep telling you and even for sold people you can't you can't they have to help themselves you know um i the hathor material um that's going to be released on tuesday i've already recorded there's a very powerful line where they say do not take away somebody's right to suffer and even for a distressed sold person, if you try to take away somebody's suffering, then you are taking away their catalyst point for ascension. So essentially what you're doing is stopping them. And so even for somebody who's sold, now with that being said, we don't want to intentionally inflict suffering on someone. We don't want to intentionally hurt other people. And we can be there for as a support system for sold people who want the help. Um, I, I know that as a yoga teacher myself, all I can do is be there to hold your hand and teach you the template. You have to be the one to do the work. I can't, literally, I can't, literally, you cannot do it for anybody else because it's an internal thing. Yeah, I agree. I think that for, for many, it has been a freeing moment because they have, um, like Kathy said, they have just felt like they failed. They failed that person and that, that their love or their commitment or their compassion or whatever it was that was driving them to want to help that, that indivi individual, you know, get beyond this is really... And so you, it's so much of the matrix, right? Like we, we feel like we have to do for others before we do for ourselves. We're told that that, that, that makes us um, selfish if we don't, if we do for ourselves first. But really the best thing you can do is heal yourself and then you're in a better position to offer help if it's needed and it can be helpful. But it's freeing to know that their path is actually separate and apart from yours. They were there in your, in your being in that time for a purpose, but it's not to stay there and it's not to get you stuck there. You have to unstick yourself so you can continue to move on your path and them on theirs. And that's why some people have that convergence and some people have the divergence after the, the awakening because you're, you may not, you may not be meant to be together for the long term you were meant to be together for the lesson and mm -hmm. that that to me made a lot of sense for some of my own um issues and and instances in my life too so i definitely resonate with what kathy saying that's exactly what i'm going through right now um you know all my life i thought you're supposed to forgive 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 jesus forgive gave how many times how many times did he forgive seven you know, times seven <laughs> Well, yes. We got a bunch of seven girls in this video right now. We know, we know our vacation Bible school stories. Yeah, I can hear. I can hear. If I didn't learn to forget, you know, if I'm like, you know, and, I, and so then I started saying, like, so maybe ten years ago, I would say, well, forgiveness is free, but trust is earned. You know, I'd say that all the time. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm like, I forgive you. <laughs> Thank you for the lessons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. 
<laughs> be on your <laughs> way. Well, I actually had a memory, you guys, and I've I put this in one of my videos. I can't remember what it might have been a Hathor one. So how and I, and I saw this a lot, this reaction a lot in the comment section, and I understand it because. Yeah, most of us, especially as Westerners, grew up in some sort of a Christian-based culture, I'll say. And I remember when I was in a youth group, there was this program they did at, through our youth group called the I Am Third program. They had posters, t-shirts, one, two, three, God first, other second, you third. So at a very young, impressionable age, you're being told to sacrifice yourself for others. Well, it makes sense. Okay, so if, if you were a fourth density negative being who needed to feed off of sold people, and you know, and your intelligence, you know that these sold people have empathy and compassion, and you program them real young mm -hmm. to think that self-sacrifice is the way to be a good person, of course the church is going to teach that. But I mm -hmm. guarantee you the real Yeshua would tell you to remove somebody from your life who is hurting you yeah. right <laughs> you know yeah. and that's that's what we have to understand um and, and i i'm that way with my father um <clears throat> and when i went through trauma therapy in my early 30s i made the decision that i could not have him in my life mm -hmm. thank you for providing the dna For me to I have it, it yeah. I got yeah, I got it from here. <laughs> I think it's and, yeah. and that was, but I have been trained to believe that he was my father, and you have to honor your mother and father. And so I needed to continue to put myself in a place of being abused by his wife. It's his wife, really, that made me go, nope. And I remember my dad's sister, my aunt, um, said to me once at my grandparents' house because something had happened and I was so upset. My dad's sister is a therapist. And she sat down beside me and she said, I want you to understand that your relationship with your father is a one-way relationship. So she could see it. She could mm -hmm. see that her brother was abusing his children. But his children kept coming back, coming back, trying to have a father, trying to fix it. And in reality, even as adults, it wasn't ever our responsibility to fix it. He's the father. And so when I went through my trauma therapy, I, with my therapist, I made the decision that it's not going to happen. I mean, my stepmother already blocked my number from my dad's phone anyway, so it wasn't that hard <laughs> to, to yeah. you know, no. I didn't deserve that, that I, if my father wasn't going to protect the little girl, his little girl, then me as an adult was going to protect the little girl he didn't. And so I made that decision. And I have been a lot healthier of a person and a lot happier, <clears throat> right? And so, and so we have to understand that for those in the comment section, I want to reiterate as well. Now, first of all, if you, I know we're skipping over a lot. So if you miss part one and part two and you're like, what the hell are these ladies talking about? You need to go back and watch part one and part two to, before you watch part three. I don't think we need to totally rehash everything. But you, you, again, you have to remember organic portals do not have their upper chakras. So they do not have an emotional center. When an organic portal exits your life and you feel the pain of losing that person, don't project that pain onto them because they don't feel shit. Right. They don't miss you. Mm -hmm. They don't care. They don't have anahata. They don't know how to love. They only know how to need. Right. And I would add to that, that, you know, once you discover this, whichever being it is in your life, um, then you are presented with free will choice on how much you're going to love yourself. Are you going to love yourself mm -hmm. enough to go ahead and cut that cord and heal the attachment and let it be? Or are you just going to keep chasing after and like Kathy said, beating your head against the wall because that is mm -hmm. a no win situation. Mm -hmm. They do win. not have the opportunity or the capacity to ascend. So as much as you want to pour into that that vessel, it's got a huge hole in the bottom. It's going to keep going through. It's wasted energy. And if you're going to come back and say, why, why, why? Well, now you're just living in the pain. Right. You know. So you have to decide whether you are worthy and deserving of being happy and being whole yourself on your own without that attachment. And once you cut it and you heal from it, 
that is when you can actually take the steps on your own where you feel the strength because you made it by yourself and it builds your confidence and it builds your esteem to, to take the next step and you feel the, how good that feels and you're no longer bouncing off of the shame and the blame game because you feel like you're not enough all of a sudden within your own power you feel that you are enough and that becomes your reality instead of instead of chasing this never-ending story um, that really just loops around with, with more negativity. It really yeah, gets home for me. <laughs> Go ahead. Really does. Just last night, I was told by someone, <laughs> you know, they said, what if I don't want to ascend? What if I just don't want to? What if I don't understand it and I don't really care to understand it? And I was like, well... That's okay. your choice. That's her choice. Yeah. Yeah. So, Nessie and speak about this. I don't know if, if it was read in Mr. Fox's episode or not, but they do speak about this. You cannot. So we know that an organic portal will be able to eventually ascend if they are enveloped by a fourth density positive being. So we can't do that. Even if our souls are higher than third density, we're in a third density reality. So you can't literally forget it. You can't do anything about it. That's not your role in this, in this life. Um, so eventually they, they be, will be able to grow a, a full soul, but the same can be said for sold beings who aren't ready to go to fourth density positive, that they're not ready yet. They're still sold. And if we were to force, if we were to force everybody into fourth density positive, that would be us acting in a very satanic, negative, selfish way. Mm -hmm. right? You can't expose a being to fourth density positive who's not ready for it. It will kill them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and so we have to look at our own attachments. We have to look at our own um, selfishness. And mm -hmm. are, do we really want our, our friends to ascend with us because we're worried about them? Or is it our own insecurity and attachment and codependency? Mm -hmm. And that's where our work needs to be. Mm -hmm. Right. Because when you ascend to fourth density positive, you're going to be with those. You're going to be with with your your family, your people that you are like you, and it's going to be a totally different world than the one we're in now. And you are going to be at a place to understand that those that didn't come with you, it just wasn't their time yet. But mm -hmm. you will see them again eventually. They they made the choice to go back and stay in third density because their soul needed it. They needed them more of the lessons. You know, and so and so we can't we have to look at our own codependency when it comes to that. And Absolutely. and um, yeah, I, I just that was. The thing. I also want to bring up to, you know, it goes back to soul contract. You know, these I, I, I chose a very, very difficult nuclear family to learn my lessons from. And and. You know, speaking for myself alone, I went through that journey and I cut that cord and I cut the attachments and I mourned them and I moved on and I felt great for it. And then Source decided for me, he would give them all a second chance and they all were back in the light and had the good souls and everything. Every single one of them made the free will choice to go back to their old ways. Okay. So... You just, even source can't do it for you. Like it, that is like the big take home message here. Like you have to know, like your path is yours and yours alone. And we talk about frequency all the time in, in, in my channels and all that kind of stuff. And that frequency brings in your soul family. And that is your family. Those are the souls that you lean on. Those are the souls that you feel the connection with and that feed each other in a positive manner. And so the, the, the title, the label of mother, father, brother, sister, whatever, that that doesn't necessarily mean that the soul within is a soul that's supposed to be with you, that's been good for you, or that's been nurturing you, or anything. They were there for a purpose, and it might have not been a good one. They serve their purpose, and you take your sovereignty, your soul, your lessons, and you go the director the direction that you're supposed to go in and your soul thing that you're supposed to be surrounding you will find you you find each other so it's not like you know people cut their cords and they realize that they're born into a whole family full of organic portals and and they're alone it's quite the opposite i feel like those those folks just kind of fall away as your soul family finds you 
And then the connections that you have are just more meaningful because they actually fill your cup. And they're people that you can resonate with. And they're people that understand you just by being in your presence. You don't have to explain 45 years of your life for them to right. un you know, understand who you are and, and uh, on a soul level. And so it's much more meaningful. There's and one thing. Just, oh, sorry, Kathy, go ahead. Just going to say, I think that was part of like the, the freedom that I felt was I've been mm -hmm. in a road of potential, you know, for the last 25 years of similar to you, Bryce, and your dad, I've been estranged from my, for my mother for many, many years out of my own, you know, mental health and safety. And so that experience of like the expression of like, though no gun, though none go with me, still I'm going to go. Like, still I'm going to go within. Still I'm going to honor this that you couldn't see for whatever reason, that you couldn't um, celebrate. And the, that last little twinge of guilt and shame that that left the body for me was also simultaneously like opened up the window of potential, like the possibility of I can't receive if my hands are clenched with a white knuckling grip around that, which is not only serves me, <laughs> but is draining me. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like I, I, I um you know, I have a history of moving through the 12 steps a couple of times, this idea of like white knuckling something, right? The holding on to that which harms me because I'm afraid of just being empty and voided, mm -hmm. of just opening up and the release of not knowing what is going to, to come. It's like, I'll just hold on to the shitty familiar versus yeah. I, Kathy, I see that all the time in yoga people come into the shala and they want to change but as the as the work starts they'd rather hold on to the suffering that they know versus the unknown with the healing right. that's and, right and i think that's why people get caught in these in these cycles now two things i wanted to say quickly um I, before I forget, if there was a comment about whether organic portals reincarnate, yes. If you go back and listen to Mr. Fox's episode, somebody, I said yes, and somebody commented, no, they don't. And I said, no, yes, yes, they do. They do reincarnate because they, they're not completely without a soul. They have a little bit of a soul, right? They've been around longer than we have, okay? So they do reincarnate. That's that's how they have the option to eventually be enveloped by a fourth density higher being and be able to join us in the higher dimensions, right? So they do reincarnate. Also, I wanted to go back and talk about the why me, why me, why me? Because I know a lot that we do get st stuck okay. in that, that realm of self-pity sometimes, which is very low vibrational, which is what the darkness loves because that's what they feed off of. I'm going to tell you guys a story. My aunt, my mom's sister, I believe she was 42 when she passed away, which is wild to me because I'm 40 now. When she passed away, I thought she was like older, but now I'm like, holy crap, she was so young. Um, she passed away of cancer. Um, she was born with kidney failure. She had a kidney transplant in her early 20s, told she never have children. She had two healthy children. And she ended up having a blood transfusion uh, with one of her operations. And this was before they checked the blood. And so she contracted hepatitis from the blood transfusion. So she was just sick a lot of her life, very sick. And she ended up, when she was diagnosed with cancer, she was going in for a um, just a regular checkup for the hepatitis that she had contracted through the blood transfusion. And they found the cancer. And they were shocked that she hadn't been complaining about any of the aches and pains she was feeling, but you know, she'd been sick her whole life. So she was used to it. And right before she passed away, when she was, you know, if you've seen anybody die of cancer, which most people have, it's, it's a horrific way to watch somebody, somebody die. And my mom said she was with my aunt and she was like, Mary Jo, do you just like ever think like, why me? Like your whole life you've been sick. Like, do you ever just sit there and go, why me? And this makes me emotional. My aunt goes, why not me? Mm -hmm. Why not me? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And so when we sit around and we think about why us, 50% of the Earth's population are organic portals, and when we work on ourselves, they do tend to come in more rapidly towards us. Why me? Why me? Well, why not? Mm -hmm. Because if you play it right, even though the fourth density negatives are using those to try to derail you, with information like this, you can use it now to better yourself. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. And us, us with the soul that chose to come down here, we, we coordinated that effort. <laughs> we coordinated those, those beings to come in there and give us those speed bumps in life, right? And so um, I, I remember you asking myself, like, what lesson am I not getting? What, right. Why do I keep attracting these people yeah. long before yes. I was ever on this journey? You know, I felt like I was on a spiritual, spiritual uh, roller coaster, and I couldn't get off. Right. And um, and now, obviously, now we know so much more, and that's why we do these videos because, you know, the me ten years ago would have really appreciated seeing this then, although mm -hmm. I wouldn't have processed it probably as well as I do now. But it definitely gives. I feel like. Um, context to the chaos because there's a lot of times that you cannot make sense of why that you feel like i'm done i've done things correct i've done the right thing then these things still keep happening well if it keeps coming back around it's because you really haven't picked up the lesson mm -hmm. you're supposed to and i find most of the time the lesson is is that you matter more you matter more than all the things that you're trying to give to the other soul the other person the other being you're making them more important than you. And in that moment, you, you matter. And whenever you finally get that, you matter more, then you'll be rewarded and you'll get off that loop. Source will say, okay, we'll check that box. You'll move on to the next trial. Well, it's so <laughs> funny. I mean, we, we were talking, you know, the, the loop, the constant loop, we're talking about learning lessons. And you, again, I'm going to tell you guys, the more you ascend, the more if you sign up to take yoga or do a shadow work, or as Mr. Fox said, read the things like the Cassiopeians or the law of one, are you, they're going to be sent to you. Just know that there's no third density world where they are not going to be sent to you because these fourth density negative beings want their, their job this was a game of Pac-Man, like their job is to come in and try to block you, right. right? But if you understand that and you can disconnect the lesson of giving too much to someone else where you don't matter, you right. can block, it doesn't stop them from coming, but you can like, I already know, like once one organic portal leaves, another one's going to enter, just wait. And I already know the next one that's, I spotted it from a mile away. I just got rid of one organic portal and now another one just popped its head in I was talking to my boyfriend about it. And what's that term in psychology with narcissists? Is it called gray walling? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to gray wall him. Mm -hmm. He's just real boring. When they ask gray me a question, gray, like, rocking. gray rocking, that's it. Yeah, I, always, rocking. I never can remember that term. She'd be like real boring. I'm going to be like, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I'm just going to be, I'm not going to invest mm -hmm. any emotion into them because yeah. If you can't understand the concept of organic portals, then you look up narcissism because organic portals give away the same narcissistic tendencies. Now, this is the perfect example of what's called a distressed soul. There is a person on YouTube. I love his channel. I will put it down in the description box. He himself is a recovering narcissist. He's an aware narcissist, which is very, very rare. A narcissist will never so to me i was thinking about that i was like oh he's a distressed sold person because he's in therapy he doesn't want to be this way he's married he's got three kids he, in his videos he talks about how he works really really hard and he talks about the behavior patterns of a narcissist and he talks about why they do that and how he's working with this therapist to change those patterns because he doesn't What's the key thing? He feels bad. He doesn't want to hurt his family. He yeah, doesn't want to yeah. be this way. And he's humble enough to put himself on YouTube and he's making these videos because he doesn't want other women getting involved with narcissists. He does red flag videos. He has other people come on and ask him questions. I've watched some of his lives where women will come on and ask questions and he'll be like, you need to end this relationship now. 
So that in my mind, I'm like, okay, thank you, spirit. Like that is not an organic portal. That is a distressed sold person who is doing their own work to yes. come out of that cycle. So, but most, so if, if you're having a hard time with the organic portal thing, look at narcissistic abuse. They behave the same way as if they mirror you. They don't have a sense of self. So, so that's another reason. Most, most therapists will be like, you need to get yourself away from this person. Like, this is not healthy for you mm -hmm. to be involved with this. They don't, they're you, they're feeding off of you. They're taking your energy. Um, they have the propensity to do what's called sabotaging you. So like, if you're, if you're, I was in a relationship with a narcissist for a very long time. And so if I, if he knew I had to get up early to go to Mysore, he would have the music blaring in the house until like one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. What normal sold person would do that shit? If you know your partner has to get up early, you would be respectful of that. Yes. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to pop out just because these people are making a lot of noise. I keep having to escape. Um, oh, and oh, oh I, we can't hear anything. Well, okay. <laughs> Unless you want to pop out, you can, but I want you to, I don't, you, do you ladies right. hear any background noise? I don't Maybe. hear anything. Okay. All right. All right. They're just clanging tables around and stuff. You know, they're, they're, they're taking, sabotaging though. <laughs> breaking down the food and wine festival and then getting ready for the next event here. Oh. Well, I know, mm -hmm. Amy, you, I know you've been moving around a lot, but I know that you've gone through a lot of these things too in your life. Do you want to share some of your experiences? <laughs> well, I you're a lighthearted one, maybe. Because <laughs> I got I got some things going on, but I'm not really ready to go that deep today. Um, but just stay here at this festival. I'm, you know, I, I do a lot of these events where I'm in front of people, and I got to talk to one kid today named Jordan, and immediately, like, I just knew he had a soul. <laughs> You know, we just had the best conversation. And I said to him, I said, you are not an organic portal. And he knew exactly what I was talking about. What? And he was like, you're beautiful. I mean, and this kid was like, you know, 20. I was like, thank you so much. So are you. But, you know, real souls, people can talk to each other like that. It's, it's, a, it's different. It's not like a jealousy thing. It's not like a, when you tell somebody that they're beautiful, like he wasn't saying you're hot. He right. was saying, you are beautiful your soul is beautiful like we had this recognition immediately because he sold and i'm sold as a U L E D. um whereas a lot of the folks here today just like whoo get me out of here they're talking about you know really just i heard one man was standing right in front of my table and i'm like please move the whole time he was just talking about how you know so Johnny, you know, is now making 600 grand a year. He's just making too much money and he's, he doesn't know what to do with it. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, uh, it's so, <sighs> because it's so it's so yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it reminds me of the word depravity. Like when I think of so much of my personal work and then interpersonal work with other humans has been around the narcissist and the empath. I am deeply, deeply fascinated by this relationship dynamic. But when I encounter people, the way that Angie is describing the feeling that comes up for me is this depravity, like this, this emptiness that nothing can fill up. And it almost, <laughs> it almost brings up like compassion because to me, it just sounds so empty. These things that we try to attach to as meaningful to validate or to offer a value to who we are, um, it just feels depraved. And so I think that's something else that this conversation is doing for me is when I encounter these kinds of, whether it's a narcissistic you know, personality disordered human or whether it's a, an organic portal, that it's not personal, right? Like it's not about, has nothing to do with me, right? It has nothing to do with my personhood or who I really am. It, it is about them and their depravity. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's the ego, right? Because they can't, just like a narcissist, an organic portal does not have a sense of self. 
There's no, they have no ability to go inside themselves and to feel a sense of who they are. And it's hard to explain what that is, you know? And so they define themselves by their ego. Mm -hmm. For us who are sold people, S-O-U-L-E-D, um, we, we, there's something, there's more than just this life. We can identify the ego as the false sense of self. For someone who has no sense of self though, the ego isn't the false sense of self. It's the only sense of self that they have. For, for someone like us, we don't judge our value as a human being by how much money is in our account or what accolades we've gotten in our life. You can be proud of that, but you know also it's not really who you are. Who you are is something so much deeper. There's something you can, you can rest in it. Uh, Mr. Fox says that a lot in our conversations in the past. I've known him for a very long time where he talks about being able to rest in yourself, being able to to like spend time by yourself and rest in who you are. Right. It's like, um, you know, when for me, at least like times in my life when I've been really distraught, whether it's through going through a breakup or, you know, like black magic, I don't know, you know, and I'm like really upset and emotional there's always a small part of me that understands deep within that this is going to pass and this is just a moment in time where i don't think organic portals have that ability to have that um dichotomy of understanding if that makes sense yeah. which if you look at it from the yoga perspective or the eastern philosophy prakriti parusha an organic portal is not really going to have a parusha so they only have the property. They only have the, the hologram. That's all they have. And so you see people, and I want to make it very clear, you guys, like, so what Angie's saying, like the law of one and the Cassiopeians have been very clear right now on the earth plane, there are no new souls. There are no young souls. So what Angie's saying, like people like that might, you could say, oh, they're a new soul. No, not right now, not on earth plane. Every soul that's here right now is so, every souled being. <laughs> Whether that sold being is actively going service to self with the negative, because that so there are sold beings who are choosing to go negative or choosing to go positive are all high priority souls, meaning that they're ready to harvest, ready to graduate. So most likely someone who is vapid, who doesn't have that dichotomy, either they haven't had their awakening yet and they are a distressed sold being, or they are an organic portal. Now, with that being said, Again, I share, we share this just for you to understand as cat. So you have that liberation. So you have that understanding. This mm -hmm. isn't for us to go around and start labeling people. You know, the, the Cassiopeians are very clear about that because you really don't know 100% because you don't know what that, you know, if it is a distressed soul, that distressed soul is in their, their catalyst moment and you cannot interrupt that. Right. If that makes sense. So, um, I hope that makes sense. Yeah, yes. I think I think that that um, you know the the genuine sold people are able to ground themselves. Where if you lost all of your material things, you lost your house, your car, your job, your the things that other people that's all they have to identify themselves with. You're still very confident in who you are and the value you have as a being. Where the uh the ones that don't have that they have lost everything because they never had any value without the things the person the place and the things that they compare their life to and i'll say i i was out with my boyfriend this past week um we were hiking and i we were chit chatting about the private school that i went to and i grew up we were just talking about different people and we were talking about wealthy really wealthy people and I was saying that there, and I was thinking about it, there's a family, a lot of the kids that I grew up with were really, came from really great families, very wealthy, but very, I would say they're definitely sold people. And I was talking about this one family I knew growing up who owned, um, I'm not going to say the factory that they own. It's a, it's a big, if I said the name, everybody would know it. It's a, it's a, we see it all over the grocery stores, it's processing factory, very wealthy, millions, if not billions, you know? And I was telling my boyfriend, I was like, but I really, I like them so much because the mom whose kid was in my class would show up at this like swanky private school with the Lake with Swans in like Umbros and a t-shirt in the nineties with like no makeup on. Like she yeah. had no, there was no sense of like, I'm better than you. There was no hoity toitiness. Like 
it was and that family would create scholarships for all these inner city kids to go to my private school and they would pay for them to go to college they did a lot with the, with what they were given to try to help people and i always loved that family because you could just sit with them and you never felt like they were judging you when you had conversations with them it always felt very genuine there was never any like um nothing for their their money didn't mean anything right. to them only that it was just an a an access to help the world right you know right. <laughs> i used to say that <laughs> years ago i would say i just wish i'd come into a huge inheritance so i could give it all away yeah. <laughs> and that was like back when i was in my 20s you know or maybe yeah. even before that and it's not to like pat myself on the back but I mean, that's just what it made me think of mm -hmm. was really meaning that for, for real, you know? Well, that's a good exercise. Like to think about like if, if you were to tomorrow win like two, $200 million in the lottery, let's say, yeah, yeah. everybody's life is going to change. Okay. We're probably going to go buy a new car. You're probably yes. going to like fix your house, you know, maybe go on a trip. <laughs> cool. Enjoy it. But is who you are going to change now? No. Yeah. You know, the ba the root of who you are is probably, I'd probably still be wearing yoga pants every day. Like, <laughs> I stopped wearing underwire bras in my 20s, and I will never go back to underwire bras again. I don't care how much, how fancy any of, <laughs> any of that money is, but, you know, so that's a good way to think about it. So, oh, I think Nicole, oh, uh -oh. wanted to pop out for her dog, so that's cool yeah so yeah so so um so yeah i hope is there anything else you ladies want to add to round up this conversation we've been on about an hour now is there anything else you want to add it's been an hour this real quick i just came up the hill you know bringing my festival stuff up <laughs> earlier i loaded all this stuff in this morning at like 7 30 8 o'clock and nobody helped me all these men <laughs> They just watched me and sorry, I'm not crying. I'm just out of breath because I'm out of shape, but um, I'd come up hill. I just right now, while you were talking, looked over and I thought somebody had stolen a lot of my products. No, a sold being carried this stuff up here to the top mm -hmm. of the hill for me. And I just Yay. noticed it. Yay. I was about to say, listen, all three of us on the screen and Nicole, she had to go take her off from the South. That's, that surprises me. That like, surprises me too, because yeah. men in the South, I thought somebody tight. stole my shelf. I thought somebody stole my barbecue sauces. No, they yeah. moved it up the hill for me. And God, that's a good <laughs> Southern man. Listen, God bless the soul. If I ever end up with a man who's not from the South, <laughs> I'm going to have to just tell you what's expected of you. That's yeah. right. Men in the South are raised that they're raised like you. A woman does not carry anything. Right. When I pack my suitcases, I do not carry those suitcases to the mm -hmm. car. My boyfriend does it. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, and I'm shocked. I'm sh I when I first moved to LA. Well, I kind of thought in school in London too, but more so in LA where men were like, "What?" And you'd be carrying these heavy bags, and a man would just stare at you, and I'd be like, "You son of a bitch." <laughs> <laughs> where where's your chivalry and then i was working this other guy there's a guy i worked with he was from a town in georgia near where i grew up and we didn't know each other but we met each other at work and i saw such a difference because if a woman came in with a bunch of stuff he'd come in and immediately start to help her mm -hmm. listen men who are not from the south it is a sign of respect to a woman and if you want to show a woman you respect her she don't carry shit <laughs> that's right <laughs> you open that damn door for her okay you, listen, the high school, that's the one good thing I will say about the high school I went to. If a female teacher entered the classroom to speak to the other teacher, the boys would have to stand up. Because mm -hmm. a female entered the room. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen, man, I'm just going to say, if you want to get laid by your wives even more, <laughs> just act like a Southern man. <laughs> Every time she enters the room, carry her bags for her. Mm -hmm. You walk to that car door. You, my boyfriend still opens. He'll open the car door for me every mm -hmm. time we go. He'll open the door for me. Yeah. You show her. My husband too. We've been married seventeen years. Same. There's door. Nicole. Yeah, things. <laughs> yeah. Listen, we we're just talking about. So that Angie was saying that all these men, which is shocking in the South, like 
watched her set up this morning and didn't even offer to help, which is very shocking in the South. But then some nice person, probably a man, moved all her equipment for her to pack up without even telling her. So I'll, when my parents got divorced, I, I always still I remember this We because we get bad tornadoes here in the South. And there was this big tornado that came through and the roof on our back porch flew up and over our house and into the front yard and knocked a tree down. And my mother, everyone in the neighborhood knew my parents were getting divorced and my dad wasn't around. And so the next morning, without my mother even having to ask, all the men in the neighborhood were in our front yard cleaning it up for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's that's mm -hmm. the, that's that's people who have empathy and are, know what to do to help another. They knew my dad wasn't around. And so they went and did it for my mom. So my mom would not have to do it as a woman, a single woman with yeah. two daughters. So... You know, very much like the southern version of like the barn raising, right? Like I grew up in yeah. a really small town in southeast Georgia, and they they had that sort of barn raising mentality of, oh, I heard so and so down the road, lost some cows. It's it was just an automatic reaction to, you know, the men going out and helping or yeah, yeah, you know, taking care, providing for the community, and that those are what sold people do. Like whoever started the Southern culture of men being chivalrous to women, that was a sold person mm -hmm. who loved his wife and respected his daughters. And I will say people make fun of the South, but the South was one of the first areas of the world to allow women to inherit. Huh. If a woman was born to a wealthy family, it was her husband who would inherit her part of the estate but the south was the first to say not only are we going to open the doors for our women and carry their bags for them <laughs> but my daughter is going to inherit my estate without her husband having to be involved right. so yes. listen man man i'm telling you if a man is watching who is not from the south you want to get laid more <laughs> you just buy yourself a southern etiquette book <laughs> and don't be fake about it be real be genuine be real. Because us women know, we know, we know yeah. when a man is really mm -hmm. being chivalrous versus just trying to get something, you know. Right. Yeah. And now, yeah. and if you've been in a marriage for a long time, that's probably going to put probably going to put the spark back in your marriage if if you actually treat your wife, your wife like like she's the queen, the queen, queen. Or listen, <laughs> just listen, Lord. One of the best things I heard a man say that he figured out with his wife, because women like, I mean, we like to vent sometimes, right? Whenever mm -hmm. his wife starts coming to him with a problem, he says, all right, are you, are you venting or do you want advice? And she'll answer. Right. And if she goes, I'm just venting. He goes, okay, come on, tell me, tell me. <laughs> that will solve like 99% of all fights. If you just start right. implementing, like, are you yeah. just venting or do you want advice? Because if That's we're right. venting, we don't want advice. Right. <laughs> My husband will say, is are you am i fixing something he's like what, what do you want me to do here <laughs> like just listen <laughs> like what Nick said i'm just running my mouth there's no fixing but he'll ask what what am i doing here what's right. am i fixing something for you and i'm like no and that's a great so when, when people actually care about that communication that's another sign of this old person that they actually yeah. care about having proper communication and proper understanding of what you need from them in that partnership of a, of a marriage or a relationship. So, you know, is there anything, Nicole, I know you popped off. We're, we're about at an hour. Is there anything that you want to end off with on this part three round table of our organic portal discussion? I'll just say that, um, the, the people that I've encountered, um, I, their reactions have been very positive too, because it was information that really helped them, um, make sense of the chaos that they've been enduring for a long time. And I'm super proud of every single person that was able to um you know evaluate a difficult situation and choose themselves choose the health of your own soul and recognize that you deserve the love and the care and the compassion that you've been pouring into other people that that's a lost cause right there like you are the one that you have to do that for and um and so i commend everyone that that has to go down that journey because it's not easy but the reward on the other side, I think, is very, very much worth it. <laughs> Sorry. I was about to say, we'll, we'll put, we'll put, oh, there she We'll put Angie's uh, Fickle Pickle website down in the description box below. <laughs> um, People are going to be like, I got sick watching the movement of that. <laughs> 
Austin the phone just loop. <laughs> yeah, I and I want to reiterate that too. That's the biggest thing. Do not mourn these people. They are not mourning you. Yeah. They don't have the capacity to. Just yeah. let it go. Yeah. Cut the cord, heal the attachment, move on down the road of the I call it the Ascension Highway. Jump back on the yeah. Ascension Highway. And you know somewhere that better more, to be. More more tumbleweeds, more forks are gonna come across that highway. And when you see it, you just be like, I see you. I see mm -hmm. you coming. Once mm -hmm. you see it coming, you can be like, Oh, mm, we're not doing this again. We're not tangoing mm -hmm. this again. I see you. Yeah for who you are watch out for the love bombing watch out for the mirroring watch out for any type of, of having to walk on eggshells you know watch out for that like it, and if something doesn't feel right in your relationship it probably isn't it doesn't mean right. that person is necessarily organic portal but you have to take and know i want everybody to understand to really understand that when you have a spiritual awakening it is not about rainbows and sunshine some people still are not quite grasping that when you spiritually awaken, the first thing that's going to happen for a very long time is a buttload of shit mm -hmm. and darkness. It's like taking that damn black pill. So, you know, do not be expecting there to be this, like all of a sudden everyone's just beautiful and nice. Do not make excuses for people. I see that a lot with people who are sold beings, they'll start to make excuses for people's behavior. Oh, she behaves this way because she had a traumatic childhood. So did a lot of us. Right. Mm -hmm. Doesn't give anybody the excuse to be an asshole. And if they are a distressed old person, you still have to put your boundaries up because they need to have their little moment to have their catalyst, right? That's yeah. Right. If they are a sold yeah. person and they are a good person and they go through the, that change, it sounds like menopause, the change, um, they will come back to you and that relationship can be resurrected, right? So, yeah, but if they're meant to be there, they'll, they'll, they'll come back and find you whenever they've done the work on themselves. And you can tell the ones that want to do the work on themselves, like they take it, they take it seriously. And then, and then you can tell the ones that are, you know, really digging their heels in with escapism because they're like, love and light. I'm going to hold space for you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let me do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Listen. Yeah. That's great. Can we move on from there? Because we've been yeah. holding a whole lot of space lately. Yeah. <laughs> That's not. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> it's so funny mr fox one day and we were out walking around and mr fox was saying some really cool things because you know fourth density so third density is the density of choice and he talks about this in the part two of the organic portals fourth density i think is of um what love and then like fifth is wisdom mm -hmm. and so a lot of us that are here as wanderers which we'll talk about in the love one episode come either from fourth fifth or sixth density the Cassiopeian said most of us are fifth or sixth density and Yeshua was actually fourth density. So a lot of us came here higher, higher vibrational than, than Yeshua. So what happens with four and, and Mr. Fox was saying that he thinks he can recognize people who are four, sold beings who do kind of float around the love and light. He thinks they come from fourth density. Whereas people like us that are a little bit more like understanding of darkness are from fifth or sixth where it's wisdom where there's mm -hmm. an element of wisdom, but the polarity of fourth density positive from what I understand is when it gets to the end of its cycle, when they realize love and light becomes its own friction and polarity, because you can't ignore, you can't just bury your head in the sand and ignore the darkness. You have to use the darkness for its purpose to give you that wisdom. So that's when fifth and sixth, you get into the realm of wisdom. So, um, so yeah, I thought that was very interesting. So yeah, and a lot of organic portals will also play on the love and light thing because they, you know, if you start to like point things out to them to hold them accountable, they're going to tell you you're just negative and mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's because they can't, they can't do that work to find that accountability. Also, uh, organic portals are very, um, there are a lot of them in the spiritual world. Some of them thrive in the spiritual world because they're mirroring. They're playing the part of the spiritualist and they're probably telling you what you want to hear versus what you need to hear. Right. Right. So uh, watch people who mirror and regurgitate. Now, learning from people and saying, I've learned this lesson from this person is one thing, but then just mirroring and regurgitating what somebody else has okay. said is not the work that needs to be done, if that makes sense. So anyway, ladies, so any closing statements before we sign off? 
I just want to say thank you for letting me hang out with you. Anytime, Kathy. I had a blast. I joked with Bryce. She sent me the image of the um, thumbnail that she was going to use. And I was like, oh, I feel very humbled and fraudulent. Like, <laughs> like please don't consider me as smart and talented as these ladies. <laughs> oh, oh, God, Kathy, you, Kathy's in our signal group. And you are one of the most eloquent. You are such a wordsmith. Like, you are able to write things and say things in such an eloquent way. So I am honored to have you here on this panel. And we're all just, I mean, literally... Um, Angie, I'll cut this out if you want me to, but we met, you met Kathy while you were peeing. So <laughs> I loved it. I don't care. I, don't care. I loved it. I was like, I wish you were recording right now because this just shows how real these like, ladies are. She's like, nice to meet right you. Bonding. It's like peeing in the woods. We're bonded. That's good. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I would have peed out here behind a pine tree, but there were boats going by and like, I'm on a point. Like, it's like a. Like a, I haven't been to Georgia in, in so long, but the pine trees are, I haven't been back to Georgia in a while, but the pine trees, I just, oh God. I just <laughs> Girl, that might have picked up your fickle piz pickle business if you just <laughs> she said pickle make pickle. a little show. <laughs> Do some marketing. <laughs> that would be some great marketing, girl. <laughs> I'll be oh, that too. Be mm -hmm. the cup. Um, that, that, I could have gone under one of my tables. It's got tablecloths all the way to the ground. Now that you've already peed. Now that you've already peed, yeah. <laughs> so many ideas. These are, these are, these are, I would say these are uh, Western world problems because I've had to pop a squat in India many a time. So, <laughs> yeah. so, um, but yes, you guys. So hopefully we'll probably be doing way more episodes on this as more and more and more comes out. I know. Thank you guys for all the positive response to Mr. Fox. Um, just to answer a few questions about him before we in, talk with him again. He does not have any social media of his own. The only social media that he has is his business social media, which I'm not going to say what that is because he do he does have a lot of employees and we want to, and this is a very con controversial topic, which is why he chose to stay anonymous. Um, I, I told him I got a lot of emails with women saying Mr. Foxy and asking, they said by his voice, he sounded very gentle and sexy. Um, I can confirm he is very sexy, but he is not available. He has a family. So, <laughs> <laughs> so sorry <laughs> but he is a very he is a very sold being himself and he is a very kind being he's very good with children very good with animals and his employee is his employees love him he's a very good employer and again that is the reason why he chose to stay anonymous is because he wants to protect he doesn't want to talk about controversial things with his um jeopardizing not just his business but his employees too so um honorable. very honorable yeah. so he will be back though i talked to him today he is preparing for a law of one episode and i'm actually going to be doing another uh, mystery a uh, global mystery i'm not going to say what it is now with him um where the cassiopeians actually told us what happened and it's fascinating so we're going to be doing that filming that soon too so yeah so, all right, you guys. But if you do have, if you do as, as if you do have questions for Mr. Fox, because I got that a lot because he has such a wealth of information, you can email me, email your questions to me at esotericatlanta at gmail.com. Just put Mr. Fox in the subject line and I will forward them to him. Again, though, don't ask him on a date. He's already. Got a family. You'll get rejected. So, you'll get rejected. <laughs> He's got a family, guys. So, so anyway, anyway. Well, we love you guys, and we will all talk to you very soon. Bye, everybody. I love you too. <laughs>